Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Medinas. Today I am going to discuss about vancomycin. It is one of the most commonly tested drugs in board exams, USMLE and NBD. Let's discuss some very high yield point which are very important for any kind of exams. Let's start with the pictorial presentation. Here you can see I have drawn a planet Mars and here is the naughty bacteria. As it is coming from Mars, we can call it MARSA or MRSA. I think you all know the full form of MRSA. It is Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It is a super bug. It is resistant to most of the penicillin drugs. So the very first point is the vancomycin is drug of choice for MRSA or Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Here I have drawn a van which will remind you the drug vancomycin. So we have sent a van to destroy this naughty bacteria. So the whole picture can remind you a bacteria came from Mars named MARSA or MRSA and we have sent a van like drug called vancomycin to destroy this bacteria. Now here you can see I have enlarged a portion of bacteria. Before going to mechanism of action, here you can see I have put a positive sign or plus sign because vancomycin only acts on gram positive bacteria. Okay, I am repeating again. Vancomycin only acts on gram positive bacteria. Now let's discuss very briefly about the structure of gram positive bacteria. This is cytosol which is surrounded by a lipid bilayer membrane or you can call cell membrane and just outside the cell membrane there is cell wall. Cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. Here you can see the peptidoglycan layer. The structural unit of peptidoglycan is the NAM NAG unit. NAM stands for N acetyl muramic acid and NAG stands for N acetyl glucose amine. Every NAM NAG unit has D alanine D alanine terminus, which is nothing but amino acid side chain. Now, two separate NAM NAG units are cross linked with each other by glycosidic bond between two D alanine D alanine portion. One special enzyme helps in this process named transglycosylase. Here you can see the transglycosylase enzyme which can capture and crosslink two separate NAMNAG unit. Now if you give vancomycin, what is no normally does? It firmly attached with the DLR DLR terminus. So transglycosylase enzyme unable to attach or crosslink these two DLR DLR terminus. Here you can see that's how Vancomycin inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis and eventually cell wall get damaged or destroyed. So what would be the consequences and what is the importance of bacterial cell wall? Well, the bacterial intercellular material is hyperosmolar in nature, which means it can readily absorb water from the external environment. So there is high osmotic pressure inside the cell and cell membrane is too delicate to withhold this pressure. But cell wall is thick and rigid. So it can withhold this increasing osmotic pressure. So cell wall acts like a protective barrier just outside the bacterial cell membrane. Now if the cell wall get damaged, the increasing osmotic pressure eventually can lead to osmotic burst of the bacterial cell and bacteria will die. That is how vancomycin kill the bacteria. So vancomycin is a bactericidal antibiotic because it kills the bacteria. Now let's discuss about route of administration. Vancomycin is mostly as administered through intravenous route because it is poorly absorbed from GIT. So it is very logical 
that as it is not absorbed well from GIT, it must be effective on gastrointestinal bacteria or gastrointestinal flora. Here I have drawn GIT. Look at the expression. It is happy because it is well protected by vancomycin. So another important point about vancomycin is it is used orally for the treatment of pseudomembranous colitis. It is the second line drug for pseudomembranous colitis. So what is the first line drug or drug of choice? If you think metronidazole, then you are right. So the drug of choice for pseudomembranous colitis is metronidazole. But I would like to share an interesting point which you should remember as an excellent student. Actually vancomycin is more effective or more potent than metronidazole in the treatment of pseudomembranous colitis. Still it is not commonly used because of two reasons. First is cost effectiveness. Metronidazole is more cheaper than vancomycin. And second reason is because of emergence of vancomycin resistant enterococci. That is why metronidazole had been preferred as an initial therapy over the last two decades. But remember, the, in severe case, vancomycin is the first line drug or drug of choice. Vancomycin is also used to treat pneumonia, osteomyelitis, and skin and skin structure infection, which is also called SSSI. Now, come to the side effects or adverse reaction. Four side effects you should remember. First, thromboflebitis. Vancomycin is irritating to tissue, resulting in phlebitis and local pain at the site of injection. Next is ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. This situation can be worse if it is administered with another ototoxic or nephrotoxic drug like aminoglycosides. But this nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity can be prevented by maintaining serum concentration less than 60 microgram per ml. Next is very high yield fact. If you give vancomycin infusion very fast, it can cause generalized flashing or redness of skin. It is due to non-specific mast cell degranulation. This situation is called red man syndrome. It is very important for your board exam. So some points you should remember about red man syndrome. First, it occurs due to first infusion of vancomycin. Second, it is non-specific degranulation of muscle. This situation can be prevented by prolonging the infusion period to 1 to 2 hours or pretreatment antihistaminics uh, like diphenhydramine you can use. Now few words about vancomycin resistance. Here this is NAMNAG unit with DLA DLA sidechain. As I have already mentioned that vancomycin have the affinity with this DLA DLA portion. Now if we clip this terminal DLA portion and replace it with D lactate molecule, what will happen? Vancomycin will not able to bind with that terminal portion. Some staphylococci and enterococci bacteria do the exact same thing and acquire resistance against vancomycin. Another mechanism is bacteria can alter cell wall metabolism and produce more and more cell wall materials which eventually produce a thick cell wall barrier. So vancomycin unable to reach this site of action. Those dangerous bacteria are commonly known as VRSA or vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and VRE or vancomycin resistant Enterococci. They are responsible for serious nosocomial or hospital acquired infection. In this situation, we can give linazolid or streptogramins. That's all guys. If you like this video, please share it and subscribe my channel for more videos. And if you want me to make any specific mechanism of action video, please comment below in the comment section. Hopefully, I will make it for you. Have a nice day.